All right, so I'm going to talk to you all real quick uh, in reference to an issue I'm having with management and possibly get fired tomorrow. I got a meeting with them. So if uh, you're interested, stay tuned. All right, well, thank you so much for joining um, this discussion. Uh, what I'm going to uh, give to you all, the information I'm going to give. A little nervous about tomorrow, but not really. So. So the issue I'm having with my uh, with my workplace is the amount of insubordination that is there, and I feel that the management is not doing anything about it. So, and the reason I say that is because the insubordination continues to happen. Okay, so I'm gonna probably do some. Uh, videos just to kind of let y'all know what's going on as far as the uh, insubordination and I was thinking about putting it into this video but then it's gonna be way too long you know you'll probably get bored and just click off so anyway so without further ado uh, let me just get right into it so I sent a text message to my boss uh, earlier today I had an incident happen three days ago and I was expecting some kind of information given back to me because I, I wrote a I wrote a, a letter basically stating uh, the insubordination that happened, and I basically flat out said that I'm sick and tired of working in uh, this workplace environment, uh, referring to the insubordination. I'm not so much referring to the facility or the place that I'm at, but just referring to the the stuff that I put up with, and it's a place where they they hire people that, in my opinion, should not be hired, should not be working with others, I guess. So anyway, um, I went ahead and wrote her a note, a text message, and I'll read it uh, verbatim. It says, checking on the status, dealing with management, uh, checking on the status, of management dealing with the unexcusable insubordination. I texted you and also called you uh, about a month ago in reference to a particular CNA that I had an issue with uh, insubordination. And this happened in front of uh, like eight staff, staff members. And as I mentioned in my letter, which was uh, given to them, management, uh, about the insubordination. I put in quotations, I am sick and tired of this workplace environment, in quotations. Uh, there is so much that is overlooked because this place is desperate for workers, and they know it. They do. And that's why they get away with it, because they know they can. And, of course, we're always short-staffed. So, in... My opinion, I feel that they're not letting people go that should be let go for the simple fact that now they're going to be more short staffed. And I went on to say, uh, when there's nothing about it, oh, I'm sorry, this place is desperate for workers and they know it. And when nothing is done, it forces good workers, and I'm referring to myself, it forces good workers to leave, resulting in having nothing but insubordinate rude, non-compliant, bad attitude, and or employees that have too much drama. But I'm sure you already know all this. And that was what I put. Now, should I have done that? Some might say no. Some might say yes. Let me know in the comments below if you think that it was rude or insubordinate or not good employee to... Uh, text that to my uh, my manager, my boss. But that's how I feel. I'm frustrated. I really am. Because stuff's going on and nothing is being done about it. Not that I know as far as anything's being done about it. Like, they don't necessarily have to tell me, hey, Joe, we talk. Well, yeah, they should. Hey, Joe, we talk to so-and-so. You know, let us know if this happens again. That's what a good management should do. However, nothing's been told to me. And she replied, first, I will not accept the rudeness and disrespect 
you are showing in this text. If you agree, let me know in the comments. And it goes on to say, as you speak of insubordination, we are in a crisis situation, which is ridiculous because this has been going on before this whole situation. And of course, you know what I'm referring to. And I will not apologize for ensuring that our residents and staff are safe during this pandemic instead of responding to you in the time frame you desire. So again, it's been three days, more than enough time to text me, say, hey, you know what? We talked to uh, so-and-so, you know, we're dealing with it, nothing. So what am I supposed to expect when I go back to work? Am I supposed to think that they just didn't do anything about it? Or do I not say anything, which is baloney? Because as a, as a, as a nurse, but not even as a nurse, just as an employee, you know, if something is not going on that you agree with at your workplace, you have to talk. You have to speak up. If you don't, it will continue. And I have another story about that. I'll, I'll say that later um, in this video if you uh, stay uh, and watch the whole thing. Hopefully you do. So it goes on to say, I do not discuss my disciplinary actions towards other employees with other employees. Now, I agree with that in a sense to where you don't have to tell me a she's on probation or a she has one more chance and if she messes up she's going to get fired no you don't need to tell me that but as i feel as an employee and you being the manager you should say joe we talked to this person again and you know something was going on or you know she doesn't like this about you or she thinks you're doing this towards her something but again i'm not hearing anything from her the management and then she went on to put i interviewed everyone um i interviewed everyone here that morning of the alleged incident and there are always two sides you are not completely innocent as you might think what did I do? And I'll put, I'm going to make the video. Um, I'm doing that right after this one. I'll make the video to, to let you know what happened and why she's saying this, that I'm not completely innocent, which is baloney. But uh, like I said, I'll, I'll do that video. Your constant dis, let's see, your constant remarks about this facility, which is true, staff, and management are not acceptable. Okay, I understand. Because I do talk about bad about the management to other staff members. And what I'm saying basically is people are showing up late and there's no consequences. People are calling in and there's no consequences. And this is all before this whole, you know, pandemic thing that's going on. This is like from day one, when I first started, people just show up when they want, if they want. And that's not acceptable. And like, I don't get it. Like you're, you're a boss, you're in a management position. You have to lay down the law. You have to tell them, you know, it's not acceptable. It really isn't, you know? So before I go off on a tangent, if you despise this facility, despise. If you despise this facility so much, I welcome your immediate resignation. And I replied to her, thank you. And she said the, the administrator, which is the boss boss, would like to meet with me tomorrow between 10 and 2. And that way you can uh, respond to him and let him know if that will work for you or whatever. And I put, yes, I will be there 10 sharp. And I texted him and let him know that I will be there at 10 sharp tomorrow morning. Man, like this place is like the reason I 
I stayed at this place is because one, it's small and uh, much smaller than the place I was at. Two, they have additional, they have RT, so respiratory therapy there, which is really good. I've never had that before, but then I've never done with trachs, you know, dealt with trachs before. And so that's cool. And, and I like it. it it's small. It's a, it's a different pace for me. It's really cool. I, I do like it. So I decided to, to stay at the beginning. And I mean, there was just so much stuff. There was just so much stuff that I saw wrong with this place. But, you know, I'm talking to them at the very beginning. I was talking to the management a lot, you know, because I felt that I could make a difference, you know. I think I'm a strong nurse. I really do. And I'm not full of myself. I'm not conceited. I know what I am. I am a strong nurse. I have a lot of teamwork. You know, I do a lot of teamwork. I, I build teams, you know. It's it's something that I'd like to do. I, I, I love the fact of, one, helping people. And two, if I need help, they're willing to help. So that's what you're supposed to have at a workplace. Now, this place is something different. And I felt that I could make a difference. You know, they said that they're going to be hiring new people, getting rid of, of people, which they have. They've gotten rid of one nurse since I've been there. And one of the other nurses that I feel that she should go, or at least be talked to, which I, I don't think she's been talked to because uh, she continues to come late. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you that story now. That way I don't have to edit another video. Oh, and just to let you know, whenever I do videos, if you're still watching, if you are, let me know in the comments below. Hey, I'm still watching. But one thing I do in this video, and all my videos really, is I edit them. I edit them so much. If I start going off on a tangent, I usually cut that out. If I do a lot of ums and uhs, I normally cut those out. So if you hear a lot of ums and uhs in this video, just know that I took out about 60 of them. I'm not sure if you've ever tried to do a video or actually recorded yourself talking, but if you do, go try to explain something for like 10 minutes and you will realize how many ums and uhs you, you say. Like you, you don't even think about it, but you do. So without going too much into that. So the first incident I had with uh, this particular nurse, I was working overnight and they were supposed to get there at a certain time, we'll just say seven. And I, I'm real particular on time. Myself, I'm always there 15 minutes early, every single time. If I'm not 15 minutes early, I consider myself late. That's a very good practice to have. Now, the latest I'll ever be is I'll get there right on the hour, which, again, that, that doesn't happen too often. I always try to get there 15 minutes before. So it's already going to be 7, and I look at my watch, and it's like, cool, uh, my relief's almost here. You know, I just worked 16 hours. I'm tired. I want to go home. You know, 7.10 came. Still nothing. 7.15, 7.20, 7.25. And I'm thinking, are you freaking serious? 7.30. And this nurse strolls in. And when I say stroll, I mean strolls in. You know, didn't say, hey, Joe, you know, I'm sorry. You know, there was traffic. Or, hey, you know, I slept in. You know, I'm sorry. Or I, I didn't hear my alarms. Or I put too much snooze. Or my kids. Or nothing. Nothing. She came in, she put her bag down, and I looked at her, and I looked at my watch, and I said, it's 7.30. And like that, she went hood. And when I say hood, I mean hood. She started doing her neck thing, and the very first thing she said was, don't you start assuming nothing and doing the whole head. And I said, and she's, she's not yelling per se, but she's talking really loud. 
and I'm and she's like right next to me. And so the whole thing went down. She came in, got next to me, put down her bag. I looked at my watch. I looked at her and I said, it's 730. And she, oh, don't you start assuming nothing and blah. And she just went off. And I said, whoa, whoa, wait. Like I do every, you know, hey, hold on. I said, wait. I said, wait a minute. Like I'm not assuming nothing. Like I'm saying a fact. The fact is it's 730. Like I'm looking at my watch right now. And the fact, 730. And she's like, well, let's just count. Let's just count. So we have to count the narcotics. I said, no, that's fine. You know, we'll count. But like, and as I'm getting up to, to go count the cart, I asked her, I said, like, did you call anybody? Did, you know, did you, did you call management or did you call the facility? Cause I was right by the phone and she just, you know, continues shaking her head and, and talking like really loud. And she's like, who are you? You're not my manager. You're not my supervisor. And just like keeps going. And I told her, I said, no, I am not your supervisor. I'm not your manager, but I am the person, the nurse you are relieving. You know, so it's important to me to know if you're going to be late. And I told her too, I said, if, you know, something happened, you know, the kids were running late or, you know, you didn't wake up or you overslept or something. Hey, I understand. And I told her just like that. Hey, I understand. But I don't know what happened. All I know is that you're at 730. And you're just walking in here like nothing. And she didn't say a word to me. She just gave me nothing but attitude. Oh my God, so much attitude. And we counted and then that was it. And then as soon as that happened, well, my management finally showed up. And like, I don't let stuff like that go. Like I, I really don't. And because if you do, they will continue to walk on you. And I am not a nurse that gets walked on. I'm not a person that gets walked on. So I go to my management, knock on the door, go in, and I let her know straight off the bat. I said, look, I'm not a rat and I'm not a snitch, but I have to tell you what happened. And I let her know and she's okay. You know, we'll talk to her this and that, blah, blah. And I said, like, who does that? Who goes hood? Like, what what kind of people are, and I, I told her too, like, what kind of people are working here? Like, really? Like, I'm, I'm just telling you, like, it's 730. And you go off on me? Like, how dare you? Like, I, I don't even understand that. So, uh, that was the first thing. And this happened, like, maybe two months ago. And this nurse, every time she would relieve me, She's always 15, 20 minutes late every single time. I don't talk to her, count, and I get my report on my sheet. She can read it. If there's something that's super vital, like uh, somebody's been running a temp or something that's, you know, in, you know, critical care, of course, you know, I, I give her that little bit of information and that's it. She can read the rest because normally I give report right at the hour. It was just like so upsetting that like the, and what gets me mostly upset is to me, that is so inconsiderate, so rude and everything else. But to think that your time is more important than my time. Everybody's time is important, but I would not let you think that yours is more important to where you can show up whenever you want and I have to wait. And and I told and I told my management it's like, you know, what if I had something to do, which I didn't, but what if I had something to do? What if I had to take my kids to school or had to take my kids somewhere or if I had an appointment or something to where I had to be there at a specific time, but now I couldn't because this nurse chooses to be late every single day so that happened and she hasn't talked to me for a good two months until just recently when i had the uh, altercation with the cna um like 15 minutes later man my day was going good because you know she finally talked to me you know she hey joe you know uh, what's going on on the hall this and that and i was like cool this is inviting 
is not the cold wall that she's been putting up for the past two plus months. So I told her everything that happened and even gave her some extra information. She was cool. I was cool. Day was great. Now, about a, a few weeks ago, we're, of course, short staff, like always. And the um, management had to actually work the overnight with me. So they were on one side, I was on the other side, and seven o'clock's coming, and uh, she goes, oh good, you know, they're almost here. And I laughed. I said, no, they're not. I said, they're never here on time. I said, I I'd be surprised to see them show up on time, but if they do, no, that's only because you're here and they know you're working. I said, but they never show up on time. Do you know what her response was? This was the worst response I've ever heard from a management. Her response was, I'm just glad we have somebody that's going to show up. Really? Instead of getting on them because they're being late, you're just happy because somebody is showing up? Wrong attitude, poor management. You, I don't... I really don't get it. I don't. And I'm I'm truly fed up with this place. I really am. And I kick myself every day because my previous employer actually had reached out to me and wanted me to work for them. And I told him no because I just started this place and I'm not one to just quit and just go wherever. I, I'm I, I like working in a place and I stayed there for a long time. And like I kick myself, I really do. Like, and like my people are good. You know, some of the nurses are good. Some of my CNAs are good. It's just certain ones that really upset me, and I verbalize it. I let them know. I let the management know, and nothing is done. And this is going to happen everywhere. I understand that. I know you're probably thinking, Joe, stop. You know, griping. This happens everywhere, but it shouldn't. That's the problem. It should not happen everywhere. It should be very far in, in between. I, I talked to another nurse, and she said that the place that she was at, which is a different place, was pretty much the same thing. You know, completely hood. CNAs were yelling at the, the, uh, the residents. Nurses were uh, yelling at the other nurses. Very unprofessional, so unprofessional. But the management doesn't do anything because management is so desperate to have people working. To me, that's unacceptable. It really is. You know, what kind of management? And not only that, but as an employee, if I wanted to, I could start going in late. I could if I wanted to. And that's not me, though. Not only that, but my time is not more important than the nurse that I'm relieving. So now I'm putting more work on that other nurse. And what if they have to leave? So it's it's just something else. It really is. That's all I got. I might get fired tomorrow. I mean, if you watch this video tonight, you know, hopefully uh, I have light on for next month to see if... Uh, <laughs> See if I have a job. But regardless, I'm going to, after I upload these videos and stuff, and uh, again, with these videos, I edit them and fix the audio. Even the audio is still messed up. I still haven't gotten a good camera that I really like. Uh, that's probably like in another year or two uh, once I start getting really into doing the videos. But uh, I try my best as far as the audio goes in the, the video. But once I do the, all the editing, I'm going to make a couple videos tonight. But uh, once I do all that, I'm going to start applying for jobs because, like I said, this place is is not worth it. It really is not. Please leave me comments, likes, you know, all that fun stuff. Everybody always says that, and we do mean it, though, as far as YouTube uh, creators. You have no idea how important it is to us to get engagement from y'all.
you know, if, if you, not only do you watch it, but um, that you interact with it. You know, you do comments, you do the like, you know, it, it really means a lot to us. It, it makes our time worth doing all the stuff that we do as far as, there's a lot of editing, man, there's, there really is. It's a lot of editing that goes into just making a, a dumb video. And uh, granted, I don't think my videos are dumb, but I'm just saying, you know, just, just videos in general, it, it's, it's a lot of work. And there's some where you can tell that people have put in some work. And then there's some where you can tell that uh, they just recorded off their phone and there's a lot of wind and, you know, the, the lighting's not right and they just upload it. And then there's others that, you know, buy, lights and cameras and just everything and you know they're trying and me i'm one of those i'm i'm really am trying to get better video quality out audio quality and just more uh, value content so i know this video went on forever but it's just just my life and that's that's pretty much it so wish me luck give me a thumbs up if uh you want me to have a job have liked I uh, really appreciate all the uh, interaction I get that's it I'm probably put a poll as well you know um, if uh, I should stick with it stick it out or you know try to get something better but I think I am gonna try to get something better and that's it thank you so much for watching as always appreciate everyone who watches my videos I really do I have of course different um, Nursing videos, uh, 12 cranial nerves, uh, but you know, stuff with potassium, lab values, uh, just, you know, just a whole bunch of different videos. I uh, got a playlist. Check it out. Watch the playlist. Uh, like I said, it really helps us out. And um, take notes. There's a lot of notes. Share my video. But y'all hear this all the time. I know it gets repetitive, but we it means a lot to us. It really does. And again, just thank you so much. I, I appreciate each and every one of you who watch my video. And again, um, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Bye.